You want to a life transforming experience? As Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, very quickly, I'm just going to run through. You know, I started a teaching on um, understanding the soul, and I'm going to finish it off today. You know, I think somewhere along the line I left that teaching. I didn't get to complete it. So I'll finish it up and let's see how God can help us. If I don't, then maybe on Wednesday I would finish it. Because it's quite a huge and a very big, you know, understanding the soul. And today what I'm going to do is I'll deal on the battles that wage war against the soul. Because actually, um, you need to know them. If you don't know those battles, you will be a perpetual victim of circumstance. I think in the previous teaching, I made it crystal clear that the greatest battle of the devil is waging within the soul. The devil is not trying to do anything different. Everything the devil is doing is to ensure that the soul of man is completely polluted, completely damaged. This is one of the things happening in the world today and it looks like the shakings and all the issues the world is going through cannot find lasting peace or lasting solution. All the problems of mankind, most of the problems of humanity, are all within the soul realm. Any man who has learned how to take charge of his mind can take charge of life. Is a truth. Is a truth that if it downs on you, you know, one of the greatest places to have freedom in life is in your soul. You can be born again. You can speak in tongues. You can know how to cast out devils. But if your soul is not born again, there are things your soul would hinder you from achieving. Even with all your born againism and your brain. Man is a trapatite being. That means man is a spirit. Man is not the body. Man is not you I'm seeing now. Man actually is a spirit. Man is not dust. Man is the vital life that, em- that emanated from God. Man is that vital force that left God and empowered man to live. That's what you call man. In the Greek word, you call it Isha. That's man. So what God puts in the body when he created it was man. That's spirit. Have you heard of the word spirit man? There's no spirit woman. Spirit man. So, what is inside the man is man. What is inside the woman is man. Let us make man in our image and likeness and let them have what? Dominion. Okay. So, there is the spirit, there is the body, then there is the soul. This is the three components that make up the man. The body, the spirit, the soul. If your body is clean and your soul is dirty, you have a faulty life. Okay, let me use a card to illustrate this now. Every car has a body. Every car has an engine. A car can have a very perfect body. Very wonderful paint. Very perfect, um, you know, interior. You can liken the interior to the spirit. Hmm? Hmm. Wonderful leather seats. Wonderful dashboard. Wonderful steering. Wonderful all that. You can liken that to be the spirit of the car. Then the body of the car, which is the external. 
you can like him to be the body of the human person. Then where is the soul of the car? The engine is the soul. So you can have a wonderful interior, a beautiful body, if the engine is sick. If the soul of the car is faulty, that car will not move. I've seen beautiful cars parked. Very wonderful, beautiful, neatly painted, neat interior. You are asking, why is the car not moving? Something is wrong with the engine. That's the way a lot of believers are. Why is this guy not making progress? Why does he think the way he thinks? Why is his life the way it is? Why does he act the way he acts? Why does he talk the way he talks? Why does he behave the way he behaves? It's simple. Something went wrong in the soul. And God wants not just your body and your spirit to be intact. He wants also your soul. You know, a lot of Christians think once you give your life to Jesus, everything is done. Redemption is just one side of this, you know. This whole redemption thing is a complete package. Salvation is one side. You know, salvation of the spirit man is one side or one package of redemption. There is, there is a lot of package in this redemption stuff. Okay, let me show you, um, first Thessalonians. Can we look at it first? Chapter 5, verse 23. Put it up. Let's look at it quickly. Hmm. What does God's word have to say about this stuff? You know, we've read this scripture over and over and over. But I want to read it, then I'll get into 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. Then I'll get in there. I think there are about 10 points I want to show you on those battles then you, you have to do well to spot out what are your own battles, what are the things that affect you. Then if you are just joining this series, you have to go and get the tapes, the previous tapes. I think I've done three parts. This should be the fourth one I'm doing now. So I will not go back to visit. We've done a lot of introductions, you know, on understanding the soul, how the soul works and all of all that. And then, okay, now, may the God of peace himself do what? Sanctify you completely. And may your spirit, soul, and body. It didn't say may your spirit, soul, or body. The three must. It said, okay, may your spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just your spirit. Not just your body. Your soul. Now I'm going to try to give you a little whatever. The spirit of the human person is like the fortress of the Holy Ghost. Actually, when you receive Jesus into your life, when you receive the Holy Ghost baptism, and the Holy Ghost enters you, where he goes to reside is in your spirit. Hello? That's where he lives. That's where he goes to reside. Your spirit. So because you are born again and you are a, you know, believer, the devil cannot have access to your spirit man. Because that's where the Holy Ghost is. But he has a strategy for knocking your spirit man down. There's one place he can have easy access to. And once he has access or has access to that area, no matter how born again you are, you can still be knocked out in life. And what's that area? Is your soul. He has two, four, seven access. That's why you see what the world is doing. All the crazy things going around the world. Media. You see all the crazy things going around with entertainment and all that. All of all these things happening is simply an orchestration to ensure that the human soul is continually battered. To ensure that the human soul is continually battled. Whether you know it or not, there is 247 war waging against your mind. 
two four seven war waging against your soul. Why you act the way you act? You dress the way you dress. You talk the way you talk. You relate the way you relate. You believe the way you believe. You do all kinds of things you do. It's traceable to your soul. The state of your soul is just the explanation. And anything that takes hold of your soul, anything that succeeds in molding your soul has molded your life. I, I want to let you know this because it's important you know it. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I made it clear. Give me that my diagram again. I made it very clear in the previous teaching that the soul has a mind that helps you think. You see, the soul is where your mind is situated. So that you think is in your soul realm. You don't think with your spirit. You don't think with your body. You think with your mind. And the mind sits on the soul. Then the seat of the heart is also the soul. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Can you now see that God didn't say the Spirit of God is going to guard your heart. He said, you guide it. Because whether you like it or not, there are battles waging against it. So you need to guide it. And not just guide it, you have to be diligent. That means you need to know it. You need to be very, very careful of the things coming into your heart. Of the kind of thoughts proceeding from your mind. Or the kind of information entering your mind. He said, for out of it proceed the issues of life. So your soul seats your heart. The, the seat of the heart is the soul. And your heart is that arena where you feel. You hear somebody is heartbroken. Somebody feels pain. It's not in the body. Oh. Oh, somebody feels so bitter, so heartbroken. Maybe over something somebody did wrong. That thing happened inside the heart. You hear of heartbreak. And the person is crying. The person is feeling pain. Maybe he has just lost a loved one. Maybe somebody dear and close to him has just died. And he's feeling so sick inside his heart. And do you know what affects the soul can finally affect both the spirit and the body? Because the three are intertwined. There is a marriage between the three. Whatever affects your soul can eventually affect both your body and affect your spirit. For instance, you see a person who is having a problem with worry. He's having a constant battle with anxiety. He's having a constant battle with fear. He's having a constant battle with depression. Give that guy little time. That sickness he's feeling inside his soul would graduate to the body. And from nowhere you hear that this guy now has stroke. You hear he now has high blood pressure. You hear he now has an uh, ulcer. These are body ailments. How come the soul affected the body. I used to think it was what we eat that affects the body only. I used to think it was whether we took our bath or not, whether we took our bath well or not, whether we use the right cream, whether we, uh, you know, whether we eat the right food. I used to think those are the things that affect our body only. I used to think when you drink bad water, and hey, you are now a victim of cholera. I used to think when you eat bad food, you start having stomach pain. I used to think when you do some of, you know, I didn't know that the soul can affect your health also. That a person finally becomes sick is not because the person ate a bad food. Or just because the person, you know, didn't take his part. It could be that this person had allowed the wrong information. Had allowed junk infiltrated his mind. I used to be a victim of this thing. And just like an engine of a car, if it knocks, it's going nowhere until you change it. Until you fix it. Your soul is the seat of your will. So, 
all the decisions you make in life, all the judgments you make in life, all the choices you make in life comes from your soul. You choose the kind of person to marry. You didn't do it in the spirit. It happened in your soul. You chose the kind of clothes to wear and come to church this morning. It didn't happen in your spirit. It happened in your soul. Because before you wore that clothes, your eyes saw it. You, you, you felt it. You felt like put it on this. You didn't have to pray to wear it. Is that right? So the seat of your will is the soul. Whatever is coming out of your life is what you have allowed, it consciously or unconsciously to get into your soul realm. So you are the way you are because you trained yourself that way. You are just the way you are because you trained yourself that way. No witchcraft is responsible for the way you dress this morning. No Satan is responsible for the way you feel this morning. If you feel happy, it's not the fault of the devil. If you feel angry, it's not the fault of the devil. It's your choice. I said things and circumstances can happen. You don't have control over the things that happens to you. You only have control over the things that happens in you. That, that's the way it works. So, it is, it's possible why I live here and now, an Okada man can just splash water on my body. I didn't have control over that. I can have control over how I respond. It's the seed of your will. If you don't get into this thing and get how it works, know how it works, you'll be a victim of responses you are not, you don't need. Be a victim of reactions you don't need. This is what is going to keep my life in peace now. I'm learning it. Hmm. One of the things I learned earlier in life is that whether I like it or not, no matter how I try to do good, no matter how I try to live my life, you can't please everybody. I learned it. They did that truth down on me. I had peace. So, I am not trying to... No matter how you try to live your life, no matter how you try to die for people, no matter what you try to do for people, no matter how good you try to do good, <laughs> you cannot please everybody. So, it's inevitable that people will hurt you. It's inevitable that people will talk against you. It's inevitable that people will disappoint you. It's inevitable that the people you put your trust and hope and confidence in will let you down. But I'm not going to let it get into my soul. I will not let it get into my mind. It is my job to check out the information I don't want. Nobody will do that for me. So when you get deliverance in this area, or people think deliverance is necessarily come out, demons, get out, and all they think that's what deliverance is all about. <laughs> the greatest deliverance a man can have is in his head. It's not. <laughs> It's not your village. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. You think it's village. Witches and wizards. Well, I'm not saying that they don't exist. They do. But what if you are your own witch? That's where we have a case. Is here. The problem is here. So, a man who have saved himself from this side would make life a beautiful place. That is, you will not have issues. People can do whatever they want to do. Act irrational. You know, human beings are the most wild animals I know. Mm. You know, like in our country, we have constitution, rules and regulation. Go and remove rules and regulation, you'll find that we are living in a jungle. Any society without rules and regulation is finished. <laughs> society without laws is worse than the jungle. Have you been to a forest or a jungle where you see wild animals and all that? 
Society without rules and regulation is a jungle. You don't have control over people, my friend. Don't be deceived. You do not. I say no matter how good you are, you don't have control over people. No matter how disciplined, no matter how you try to, you do not. Let's look at a few battles. One of these battles that wage against people's soul, wage against people's mind, that makes it difficult for them to get into the realm of their breakthrough, get into the realm. They are physically looking, you know, okay. You see them dressed wonderful. You see them dressed elegant. You see them looking like all is all right, like all is well. But get close to them and talk with them. What you find out is that there's a big problem. There's a hole somewhere. I've seen beautiful people, handsome people, dressed neatly and dressed powerfully. Hey, if they talk to you, you'll wonder. If you know what is happening within them, in their mind, you would wonder. That's why I don't get carried away by some of this facade we do. Seen beautiful ladies who are sick inside, but they are using makeup to cover it. I've seen how some guys who are not bold, they can't talk. They are wearing suto, but if you know how wounded the guy is inside, he can't stand before his peers. He can't stand where others are standing. It's something that has gone wrong inside. So we use clothes and use makeups and cover it. But when I start talking to, you know, with them, if you see what they tell me. I've tried this. A particular lady, I will keep telling her, you can do this. You can become a leader. You can. She keeps seeing herself. You know, Moses, for instance, in the Bible, when God wanted to send him to Egypt to go and get the children of Israel out, one of his biggest problems came from the way he was thinking. You know, he told God, I'm a stammerer. There was never a record of Moses stammering anywhere in Egypt. He was born in the best house in Egypt. The house of a king. That was where he was nurtured. He went to the best school. How come all of a sudden, the same Moses who the Bible never told us was a stammerer, is not a stammerer. From nowhere, the guy is now a professional stammerer. Moses... Get up, take your walking stick. You are going to Egypt to go and release my people. And Moses replies, Wait a minute. Moses. I got said, you 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 your own Moses. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you are going to go in and he said, do you know what you are asking me to go and do? You are asking me to go and die. Pharaoh is looking for my head to kill. Who told you? You see, sometimes some of you, you are running away from things that are not pursuing you. It's not because those things are actually there. They are inside your head. Those things some of you are afraid of doing. It's not because they exist actually. It's inside your head. As a man thinketh. Pharaoh never declared Moses wanted. How come Moses knew he was wanted? And the thing kept him in the wilderness. For years. He could not fulfill the assignment he started in Egypt. Do you know Moses' assignment started when he killed the Egyptian? All he needed was just a little training, perhaps. All he needed was just a little refurbishing. All he needed was just a little, put this guy in shape, you know, train him and coach him on how to lead a revolution in a nation. He doesn't need to kill. He doesn't need to commit murder. He doesn't need to do bloodshed. He doesn't need to do whatever. He doesn't need to spill blood to get any nation changed. All he needs is let him carry something. 
that solves problems. Intangible wealth that solves problems. So for many years he left Egypt wandering in the bush while he was living in fear. Still a Christian. Still a wonderful brother. Loves God. But can't fulfill his calling. Can't fulfill his destiny. Can't fulfill his purpose. Can't fulfill his assignment. The problem was inside him. In his mind. So God tells him, you are going to go and send, say to Pharaoh, let my people go. God battled with him. Battled. God had to do all kinds of signs and wonders to get this guy believe. One time he said, what is in your hand? He says, it's a rod. He said, okay, put it. The thing became something else in his hand. He said, okay, now let me show you. He said, put your hand in your whatever. He put it. The thing, he became leprous. He said, okay, that's not enough. Look at this bush. It's, it's green. It's still alive. But you see, it's catching fire. That means I am that I am. I am a God of signs and wonders. You know? So you don't need to be afraid. I'm going with you. You don't need to wonder how you're going to confront Pharaoh and talk with him. As long as I'm with you, all the giants and the pharaohs in the land will bow. Can I hear you say an amen? Yeah. So for Moses, God, how can this thing be? Show me signs. There's another guy called Gideon. The almighty man of valor. He say you are lying. You say, you don't know where I'm coming from. Let me teach you where I'm coming from, Lord. I know my origin better than you do. You know there are people you are telling you are going to take nations. They are telling you about their background. They are telling you about their problems and their circumstances. They are telling you about the things they are going through. This I was born out of wedlock. I was born without silver spoon. Go to the market and buy one. If you were born without a silver spoon, they sell a lot of them in the market. Buy one, put it in your mouth, go all over the nation telling people, I bought a silver spoon. Which one is better? Who has more glory? That they dashed you something or you bought it? <laughs> Amen. 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 So they go about complaining. No, no, no. And they forget. I believe in this meeting, God is going to heal your minds. Yeah. That's what is holding you back. Nothing more. I say nothing more. It's just the way you think. It's just the battles waging inside here. That's what is holding you back. The moment you have mental freedom, your life is free. You can achieve. Do you know you don't need money in your pocket to be great? You don't need to be born in the house of a king, in the house of a queen, to be a great man. Kingship is not in the palace. Kingship is in your mind. He says, as a man thinketh in his heart, that's what he says. So you think poor, you think slave, you are slave. If you think you are a king, you are a king. If you think you are poor, you are poor. So if the devil wants to capsize your destiny, he has a simple way of getting it done. He will just find a tent in your soul and go and pitch. You know why Africa is a very backward continent? Why Africa is the way it is? Why Nigeria is still the way it is? It's not because we are not blessed. I think we are the most blessed nation in the world. We have all the natural resources. We have all the whatever you can call it. Naturally, we are blessed. We don't suffer natural disasters here. If there's any little, we even suffer. Maybe one small flood. It comes and goes. We don't hear of earthquake. We don't hear of tsunami here. We don't hear of hurricane. Blessed nation. Agriculturally. See how blessed. Our land is so green and fertile. But why is the nation's development still prolonged? I will tell you why. It doesn't matter what you are building in the nation. If the people are not built up, that nation will decay. The greatest resource in any nation is people resource. That's a problem. So check the majority of our citizens. How do they think? Do you know why you go to school, for instance? The university is supposed to be a citadel for mental liberation. 
It's supposed to be a place where you go to, when you go to school, what the school is meant to do is to set you free your mind. That's education. Education is not meant to train you to go and look for jobs. It's meant to empower your mind to create jobs. Empower your mind with vision. Empower your mind with innovation. Empower your mind with creativity. Unlock timidity. Destroy the bondage of timidity and unlock creativity. That's what education should have been doing. Our nation thinks more of consumption than production. We don't believe we can manufacture anything. We believe in importation. Our crude oil, we send it outside. They go and refine it and bring it back. And we buy it at a more costly, the more costly price than we even sold it. Don't you see the way our citizens behave? You see, a natural black man feels incomplete in the presence of a white man. You see, I know you both, I think that's what you guys call it. You start feeling there's something about the Oyubo guy that is better than me. You are the same. The man is not better than you because he's white. He is better because something happened here in his mind. Okay. I want to end it this way. What are the battles waging against the soul? What are the battles? What kind of battles happen in your mind? I will try to show you ten. I'm, you know, there are a lot of them, but let's see. What are those things that if you don't check them out of your head, it will cripple destiny. It will cripple your purpose. It will cripple your life. What are those things? Let's look at them. Number one, negative pasts. Negative pasts. When a person comes from a past that is full of negativity, Maybe it could be past mistakes. It could be past wrongs. Past lifestyle. Past behavior. Something you used to do, but you feel... This thing is so negative that God can pardon it, perhaps. It can damage your soul. One of the things he does is that he starts giving you a feeling of incapability. Negative past. Maybe you were a cultist before, but now you are born again. You are trying to live your new life now, but it's like that, that picture of the kind of life you lived yesterday still wages in your mind. It's still... Maybe you were a prostitute before, perhaps. Maybe you were a chain smoker. Maybe you drink, you, you were a drug addict. You are an armed robber. And now you are saved. But once in a while you wake up in the morning and the things keep playing in your head. Hey, you just remember how you murdered that person. That's why anytime I do a prison outreach, I'm not interested in going to preach Jesus saves you. He loves you. He dies for you. If you give your life to him, you will go to heaven. That's not all I'm interested in. That's just one. I'm also interested in the reconstruction of this people's mind. Because there's something that has happened within that they are staying in the prison. When they see the normal guys on the street who are walking free, something in them tells me I'm a convict. I am a, I am a bad egg in society. And that's why most of them leave prison. They still go back to their crime. Because there was no curriculum to reconstruct their mind. There was no framework to reconstruct their, me their mentality, to reconstruct their thought pattern. No mental reformation. One met me and told me he does not believe God can accept him again. He doesn't believe he can amount to anything. That this is all he can be. He's out of prison, but he doesn't see, you know, hmm, negative pasts. Maybe past mistakes, past failures. If you don't overcome yesterday, you won't lay hold on tomorrow. If you don't overcome yesterday 
and the mistakes, you cannot lay hold on your destiny. I like the way it is called. It is called past because it is past. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. That's your past. And all things have become new. So where does all those feeling of, I'm not, you know, guilt, all those feeling of, oh, it's because you don't know you are a new man. That's why the gospel is the power unto salvation. When the gospel, the true gospel is preached to a man, that gospel should not just get him speaking tongues alone. It should get him changed the way he sees himself. It should get him changed the way he thinks. It should get him changed the way he perceives himself. It should get him changed the way he thinks about the life he lives before. This time he's no longer thinking of what I did before. He's now thinking of who he is now and who he can be tomorrow. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So maybe you are here and that is what is holding you. Negative fasts. Because of time. Number two, negative emotions. Negative emotions. I can show you list upon list upon list upon list upon list of things that I call negative emotions. There are plenty. There are plenty. There are plenty. Negative emotions. Negative feelings. Negative reactions. This one affects a lot of people, especially ladies. It affects men too, but ladies are the most affected in this one. And it's a crippler. Have you heard of the woman called Mary Magdalene? Okay, maybe we'll get to our story when we get into some other points. Negative emotions. Hot is a negative emotion. That somebody did something wrong to you. Somebody hurt you. You know what I'm telling you is that this thing has happened in my life. I have seen this thing happen. I have seen hurts beyond you, beyond imagination. That's eh, somebody you least expect. Just wake up one morning and takes your heart like this and it can leave an injury in your heart and if that injury is not healed it can slow you from entering your destiny negative emotions it can be a heart that comes from family it can be a that comes from friends hearts that comes from association hearts that comes from relationships hearts that come from marriages if you do not have freedom inside your mind, if you don't overcome that negative emotion, you will have a problem succeeding in life. Big one. And it's holding people down. I've seen guys who had, you know, they have struggles trusting a lady again because of something the lady did that just shattered her or shattered him. I've seen guys who have struggles or ladies who have struggles even getting married because of one experience they had with a particular suitor or a fiance or whatever you call it. If you don't overcome that emotions and move on, you cannot enter your place of manifestation. It's one of the tools and the battles the devil is allowing wage over your mind. Is using it to wage over your mind. Some of us are still holding on to past thoughts. Sometimes the thing wants to affect me. I just remember one person like that and my heart will just swell. I'll get angry and I'll just wish I... Then what I usually would do in such cases, I just start talking to myself. I just start speaking. I just take a hold of my heart. I just take a hold of my mind. You know the way I'm living life now? I live my life with a consciousness of the fact that all it takes to make me happy is me. 
I will love people as much as I should. Oh. I will train them as much as I should. But I will not expect anything. <laughs> I will. But I won't expect anything in return. So, the way it works is this. I, 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 I relate to people now thinking that they are my next, they are the next Judas that will stab me. So what do I do? I just put my heart in, pre- in one check like that. I just put things around it. Just guide it. So I'm loving you while it lasts. I'm with you while it lasts. That's the way I am now. We are laughing while it lasts. Any day you choose to just do one thing. It won't touch me. Because I expected it. Because human nature is not infallible. Human behaviors are not, I told you a few minutes back, that the jungle is more sane than society. You see this thing called jungle of animals. Remove law and order from society, you will see the worst animals ever, human beings. Let me say this one to you, maybe to help ease you a little. Do you know if there was no Bible and no instruction God didn't say a pastor must marry one wife. Trust me, I would have married ten. You would have married twenty from where I'm seeing you. Hello? Can we be sincere a little? Yes. So the, the, the essence of law and order is to put boundaries. Because human nature can do anything. I wish I didn't find a place in the Bible where it says a bishop must be a husband of one wife. I've been married seven. Number of completion. Sometimes I ask God, God, how do you think it's possible to find everything you're looking for in one woman? (laughs) How is it possible? The woman you want to Marry, perhaps, is a good cook. But does he have a gap teeth? And you like gap teeth? What will you do? <laughs> Someone like me have a list that cannot be exhausted. I don't know. <laughs> the list is inexhaustible. If you look at my list, you see a perfect cook, beautiful, tall, must have the figure eight, ten. Must have good smiles. Must be romantic. Whether you like it or not, romance is scriptural. <laughs> romance is not a Western culture, it's Bible culture. It came from the Bible. You've not read Sons of Solomon. You are joking. Single brothers and sisters, I profess in your life. May you not marry a bro. May you not marry a sister. The Bible would say he'd have find it a wife, not a sister. Don't give me a sister. Finish telling good, 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 good things. Oh, you are the, the spice in my world. You are the one that makes my world goes round like merry go round. Hey. When I got up this morning, I couldn't wait to see the rising sun. Because each time I see the rising sun, I, it reminds me of you. The way you finish saying all those nice things, the sister is in the spirit. <laughs> She's here just looking at you. Wow. As she finishes, she just, you know, Father, I thank you. He <laughs> said, bro, what can I say? We return all the glory to God. <laughs> God punish Satan. So sometimes the list is so much. You're looking for it. You have found it in one lady that is wonderful. She is good. But at the same time you're looking for a woman who is a, a, a pastor's wife. You're looking for... 
insatiable things and you just find it one, 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 one in different people, what will you do? Go just take one, give one. That's your area of specialization. <laughs> Take and give one. Your area of specialty. Carries and give one. If there was no law here that says only one, marry one. I say, okay, that's pastor's wife. Come. You, you are pastor's cook. Come. You, you are pastor's romance. Come. You see why law is important. That's one of the things I'm looking at as society, human beings. Life is full of hurts, full of pains, full of ups and whatever. The only way to be at peace in a troubled world is to guide your heart. The only way to be at peace with people is to guide your heart. There's no other way. Depression, worry, anxiety, tension, fear, frustration, unforgiveness. Irrational, you know, whatever. These things are all examples of negative emotions. If you see it in your life, it's a red light. It's going to stop you from entering your destiny. No matter how you pray. So what do you do? Set anything free. Anybody who is, whatever, constituting a mental pollution in your life, get that guy out before he knocks your life out. Any lady, any friendship, any relationship, anything that is constituting a mental nuisance, get it out. There are people, when you allow them in your life, they become like cancer. They become like parasite. They go and put holes one place and they are sucking. Sucking life out of you. Sucking nutrient out of you. Why kill yourself with one person who has not given you peace? Whereas there are many more who can give you that peace. And the devil allows these things to get into your head so he can knock you off. I don't have all the time, but this is a subject on its own. This negative emotion is a subject. I can stay on it forever. This is where the major wound is. And once that wound has been, has happened until there is healing, you will not experience freedom. Number three, negative thoughts. Negative thoughts. Number one is negative past. Number two is negative emotions. Number three, negative thoughts. When everything you think is negative, everything you think is in the negative, is in the negative, is in the negative, is in the negative. Everything you think is unbelief, unbelief, unbelief. Everything you think is doubt, doubt, doubt. Is a battle waging against your mind. You can never think positive. You can never think fate. You can never think possibility. Every time there's fear in your head. They tell you you're going to conquer giants. You, you mind me, conquer with giants. Unbelief. That was one of the problems of Gideon. Unbelief. Me, defeat the Midianites, I cannot. God had to work on it. You see, every time God appears before people he wants to use, or maybe an angel, the first thing you usually hear him say is, fear not. Okay, let me show you an example of a guy who had this kind of negative thought pattern. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Put it up quickly. Negative thoughts. Polluted thoughts. It's not just unbelief or doubt alone. They are also polluted thoughts. It's part of the negative thoughts. But I actually brought the polluted thoughts on a different point. So I can discuss it differently. So let's deal with negative thoughts here. The word of the Lord came to me. Yes, quickly. Can you hurry? I chose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Now look at this guy. He said, but I protested. Oh no, Lord God. Look, I don't know how to speak. Since I am only 
a youth. The next. Then the Lord said to me, Do not say that I am only a youth, for you will go to everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you. What is God trying to do with this guy? Reconstruct his thought pattern. It's the way he was thinking that made him speak that way. He was trying to change the way he thinks. He said, Lord, I cannot. I am only a youth. He said, do not say you are a youth. Because everywhere I send you, everyone I send you to, you will go and speak. Change the way you think. Change the things, change the kind of pictures that resides in your mind. Change it. Pictures of failure. Pictures of impossibilities. Pictures of I cannot do it. Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. With God, all things are possible. You see why I love the Bible? Because the Bible, each time the Word is showing me pictures of the things I can't do. Anytime I go to the Word of God, He's showing me the things I can do. Each time I open my TV, open the media, open the radio, and all they are bombarding is economic recession. All they are talking about is how the world is capsizing, how things are going bad. Each time I go to the Word of God, I'm seeing that God is telling me where the world is saying there's a casting down. There's a lifting up. I see where the Bible said that wealth and riches are in my house and the head and not the tail. I can do all things. It's a, it's a thought pattern. Anything that programs your mind programs your life. Anything that programs your thought programs your destiny. You want to know how a man think? Check how he talks. So he's Sit around people, even without resources in their hand. You know, I, I love to be around positive guys. And most of you who are close to me know that most of the things I do and I've done, I didn't do because there was money. I did because I put the money in my head. I put the thought, if it enters here, it will come out here. I say anything that enters here will come out here. It will come out practically. So I don't think defeat. I don't think failure. Actually, your life starts with your thoughts. Your thoughts grow into your words, into words. Your words form your actions. Your action forms your habit. Your habit forms your character. Your character determines your destiny. So if you are thinking negative, you can't be talking positive. If you are talking negative, you can't be acting positive. It's a chain. They are all hooked up together. That's why the way I get things done is, I just stay on it enough in my mind. I just keep thinking about it. I keep thinking about it. keep thinking about it. The moment the thing has taken hold of me, from nowhere, I start, I'm talking it, I'm thinking it, I'm saying it, I'm thinking, from nowhere, the momentum to drive towards that thing comes. Anything I want to do, I don't first look at whether the money is available or not. I start thinking. I start thinking. I start thinking about it. Thinking is not the same as worrying. Thinking is a necessary, is a necessary ingredient of life. It's a necessary practice of life. If you don't think, you will stink. There's nothing wrong with thinking. Just stop thinking. You are thinking too much. No. There's nothing like thinking too much. The much you think, the better your life. It's worrying that is wrong. My friend, think. And let me tell you how to think. Think big. When you think big, you involve God. Because He's big. You keep thinking it. From thinking it, start talking it. Never let unbelief settle in your head. Never let failure, failure mindset, failure whatever, thought pattern, settle in your mind. Whether you came from a broken background, you came from a poor background you came from a hopeless background you came from, maybe you were born out of wedlock don't let it settle your mind the Bible says whatever is noble, whatever is good whatever is of good report think on these things 
Don't think of don't think of the things the devil is doing in your life. Don't think of the things going on in your nation. Don't think of joblessness. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Stop thinking of unemployment. The reason you've not created jobs is because you are conscious of unemployment. You're conscious of joblessness. The reason you can't attract money is that you're conscious of poverty. You can't attract what you're not conscious of. Become conscious of wealth. It, it, it's a law. It just starts gravitating. Like me, I'm conscious of the nations. I'm conscious of the globe. I'm conscious of great things. I cannot but attract them with time. Some of you are too conscious of Okada. Ladies, you guys who have this anointing for attracting lift, have you found that any time you are conscious of a lift, you get a lift? Have you found out? I see the Lord in this church. We just dismiss. They just carry their bag and telling them, how will you guys go? So don't worry. I'll get a lift. I like play like play. As you are reaching the gate. You who is a bro. You are standing where they stand. The guy will just bypass you. Stop where the lady is. And say let me give you a lift. What about the guy? So for me I know. That one doesn't work for me. Anytime. Well thank God I have cars. But, you know, I've tried it. It didn't work. Nobody has ever given me a lift. No guy. Guys don't give guys lift. How can hardware assimilate hardware? <laughs> All those guys on the media stand. Is it hardware that is running your hardware? It's called software. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> That's why a church that doesn't have sisters is gone. <laughs> We are doing sisters convention. You will see what I will tell them. It's gone. You want to get lift as a guy. You didn't come to church this morning with transport money. This is how to do it. Find one fine sister. Life is not a struggle. You, you find one. You don't have money to come to church. Go and find one fine sister. Even if she doesn't have money, you will reach church. Stand on the road together. Behave like you are carrying anything for her. Just say, I want to assist you today. You know. I will help you with your Bible and all that. Don't tell her it's lift you want. Just say, you know, Pastor preached last time on unity. So, I'm trying to practice what he preached on. So, let's stand together here. You'll be shocked. In one minute, the guy will appear. When brothers stand, what appears, Keke? <laughs> Negative thoughts. Remove it. Some of you can't see yourself owning cars. Remove that thought. You are a student. Start thinking you can own your car in your first year, second year. Start thinking that way. Start thinking that way. Start thinking of, you know, financial freedom. Once those thoughts captivate your mind consistently and long enough, they'll begin to form your reality. Number four, so I can close. Uncertainties of tomorrow. That's the fear of what tomorrow holds. Is one of the wars the devil uses to wage war against the church. Wage war against humanity. Fear of tomorrow. So tomorrow has not yet come, but you are afraid of it. Take no thought of what to eat, what to wear, what to drink. For your heavenly father knows all that. If he can clot the sparrows... He can feed those beds. How much more you? He said, take no thought of tomorrow. He said, tomorrow will take care of itself. Think on this day. You have today. You may not have tomorrow, my friend. You have today. Make the Lord out of today. Draw up your plan. Your long-term plan. Your medium-term plan. Your short-term plan. And every day, live out the best of your life. Don't ruin today because you want to make tomorrow better. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Don't ruin your peace today because you want tomorrow to be fine. 
Live your best life now. Eat your best meal now. Even if it is gary you are soaking, soak it with dignity. Live your best life now. Live your best life now. As you journey into destiny, as you journey into the future, let your today be a reflection of that future. When people see you, they should know that this guy is truly going somewhere. When people see you, they should know this lady is truly going somewhere to happen. Don't make tomorrow miserable by the miseries of today. Don't. Dress your best. Look your best. Smell your best. Relate your best. I once asked some people, if I'm traveling to Lagos by road, I'm going by, please, is there anything different from the way I'm driving in Ezambo? From the way I will drive at Ore. Is there a different way I need to, okay, now I'm at Ezambo, or now I'm at um, Enugu. Do they use bomb bomb to steer the steering? Because this is Enugu now. So you start steering with your bomb bomb. Do you do that? Okay, when you now get to Asaba, you say, okay, this is Asaba. Now the, the driving must change. You start using your leg. How many of you do that? Use your leg to steer the steering wheel. Then when you get to Bini City, say, Bini, here I come. You now use your stomach. <laughs> How many of you do that? Let me ask you. Is it not the same hand you used to drive your car out of your compound that you used to reach Lagos? So what makes you think there's a different way to live your life now from tomorrow? I don't think you got what I said. What makes you think there's a different way to enjoy life now from tomorrow. What makes you think there's a different way to be happy now than tomorrow? There's no different way to be happy. Be happy. There's no different way to be at peace. Be at peace. So it's, it's Monday. That is Monday doesn't mean I'll be happier than Tuesday. I'll be less happy on Monday. So Tuesday I'll be happier. It's Monday. I'll be happy today the best way I can. Tuesday comes. I'll be happy on Tuesday the best way I can. Wednesday comes. I'll be happy on Wednesday the best way I can. I'm leaving no minutes to chance. I'm leaving no hour of my life to chance. I'm leaving no second of my life to chance. No room for misery. I'm living my best life now. That's the uncertainties of tomorrow. The devil uses it as a tool to wage against your mind. The fear of what tomorrow brings. Some of you, is not just the fear of, hey, will my future be bright? So he's the fear of disasters. The fear of a bad thing happening. What if I lost my father? What if I lost my mother? What if I lost my uncle? What if I lost my breadwinner, the breadwinner of my house? Not only breadwinner, even chin chin winner. What if I lost my Indomie winner? What if, what if, what if, too many what ifs? What if I fall sick? So maybe what if I die? What if I fall sick? What if this my dream crashes? Live your best life now. What if tomorrow I'm broke? What if tomorrow there's no money in my account? Live your best life now. What if I divorce? What if I, this marriage just fails? It just crashes. Live your best life now. Enjoy that marriage now. Keep enjoying it daily. Number five, wrong company. Psalm chapter one, verse one. Oh, there are many scriptures, but we cannot take them because of time. We glorify. Your holy name. Yahweh. Lama. Yahweh. Okay, number five. Wrong company. Psalm chapter one verse one. How happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked or take 
the part of sinners or join a group of mockers. This is dealing with company. He said, instead, his light is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates on it day and night. Wrong company. The Bible said that evil communication corrupts good manners. When you find yourself in a group or in a company of people who are negative, you become negative. You find yourself in a company of people who are critical, you become critical. You find yourself in a company or group of people who are heading nowhere, you will head nowhere. You find yourself in a company or group of people who don't have a vision for their life, you will lack a vision for your own life. You find yourself in the company or group of people who don't have a direction for your life. You will lose a direction for your own life. Choose your company wisely. The devil would use the kind of people that are in your life to attack your soul. Choose wisely the people you allow into your life. Do you know even wrong company can be in your family? Oh? Yes. Yes, you can. I love my father so much. I love my mother so much. I love my siblings. I love my uncles. I love my aunties. But if I find traces of communication, traces of thoughts, traces of behavior that does not synchronize with my destiny, I cut out from that communication. That doesn't mean I leave the house or I run away from them. I don't call them or talk to them. But consciously, anything that we have to do with my word, I don't get into it with you. Do you know there are visions and dreams I have I don't even share with close family members? What was Joseph's problem? I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream. All of you, where are you guys? All my brothers, come here now. And all the 11 brothers will show. The father and mother will come. He said, now let me tell you guys something. I dreamt a good dream. We were in the farm farming. We had 11 or 12 chefs. All of you were surrounding me like this. And you were all bowing down to my own. Mine was standing. You people all bowed. So what I'm saying is that you guys should start getting ready because very soon. They say, where's daddy? Where's mommy? Come, let me tell you your own. I saw the sun, the moon, and the stars. Mine was the one shining more, and the sun and the moon were paying homage to me. The father got angry. I said, shut up. Rats like you. You see, your fa- me and your mother will come and lie down and bow down to you. And that thing awoken envy in the heart of Joseph's siblings. They were, also, they were angry. What is this guy talking about? How can you be insulting us like this? And one day they plotted, who we'll kill you? Here comes a dreamer. And trust me, if God was not with Joseph, that dream would have been aborted. Be careful the people you talk to, my friends. They can, the devil can use your company to destroy your destiny. Be careful. You go and stay around a company of negative talkers or a company of people who you always share your vision with, share your dream with. You are sabotaging yourself. They will fire you and they will get you. So you want to talk about something God is putting your heart to do, look for the right people. Design the people who come into your life. Design them. Design them. Know their hearts for you. Most of them may be smiling around with you, but they don't have the right hearts for you. They don't think well of you. They don't think right of you. They be <laughs> with you, but they don't. That's why those of you who go on social media, Facebook, and all of all those Instagrams and WhatsApp, and you go and post, your wife gave birth to twins. You carry the twin plus the stomach of your wife and put. But, what you don't know is that social media is the eyes of the devil. You start getting likes and comments. Good. Beautiful. Nice. And you're feeling good and your comment is increasing. Perhaps there's somebody who didn't send you a comment. He took notes. 
Be careful what you advertise. Be careful people you talk to. It can be a satanic trap to get you out of your purpose and your destiny. Okay, number six. Polluted thoughts. Polluted thoughts. Corrupt thoughts. Immoral thoughts. Thoughts that don't bring any sort of whatever. What do I call it? Any sort of um, edification to the human spirit. Thoughts that are full of negativity. Thoughts that are full of, you know, pollution. Every time you're thinking is pornography, thinking of sex. Every time you're thinking, you're thinking of erotic pictures. Some of you have them in your house. You go and put on your wall, wallpaper. It's a naked girl. Is a naked guy with six packs. So even while you're walking on the street, you see a girl who is properly dressed, but you've undressed her in your mind. Because of the negative pictures you are allowed to enter. Your ne- polluted pictures, polluted thoughts, polluted behaviors, or polluted, you know, immoral behaviors, immoral thoughts. Once the things settle inside your mind, it begins to manifest outside. It is one of the tools the devil uses to battle the soul. Let me tell you something. You see people who are always thinking polluted, polluted, polluted things. There is something about their mentality that depreciates. Immoral thoughts depreciates mentality. Polluted thoughts depreciate intelligence. Anytime you are always glued to pornography, you are glued to immoral thoughts. You are glued to negative pictures. With these whole phones and some things you guys do now, you have access to all kinds of crazy things. You're always looking at a bomb bomb. You're always looking at people's, uh, you know, everything that is not of good report or good thought is what is entering your head. Of course, you see it on entertainment today, in entertainment. You see it in media now. Open your television, you can't be sound. It's naked girls dancing. Naked guys dancing. And whatever finally settles there now programs your life. You have to discharge it from your mind. If the pictures you constantly have in your head are pictures of nudity, pictures of immorality, pictures of wrongdoing, maybe you have them in your phones. Go and delete them. Maybe you have them in your iPad. Maybe you have them in your mind. Because finally it's going to stick your mind though. What you have been seeing on wallpaper will finally become a mind paper. So the thing saps you off nutrients. Creativity goes. Innovation goes. Um, inventive mentality goes. You can't create anything. You can't think solutions to problems. Why? Something has taken that place already. Your green matter depreciates. Some of you, you read erotic magazines. Everything God hints is what you go for. Erotic and sensual novels. There's nothing else you read that is... You, you don't have time for the Bible. You don't have time for good Christian literature. It's hints. Entertainment hints. Celebrity gists. All of all those things is what you read. Your mind will capsize. Your soul will damage. Anywhere you see an erotic novel, you want to read. But they give you a good book in leadership, you won't touch it. They ask you to read a good book on finance, you won't touch it. They ask you to read a good book on stock, you won't touch. A good book on business, investment, you won't touch it. If you do not change that behavior, change that thought pattern, you would crush your destiny. And quickly, number seven, ignorance is one of the battles waging against the mind. And a mind that is not updated will soon become outdated. It's true, whether you like it or not. If your life is going to improve, your mind has got to improve. Do you know, just like your body needs clothes to look good, just like your body needs cream to be refreshed, just like you need to brush your teeth to smell fresh and all that. Your mind is another environment that needs to be taken care of. You don't take care of your mind by eating food. No matter the amount of food you consume, it does not enter your head. It doesn't enter your mind. 
if you like it in Vegas, if you like it anywhere you want, by the time you are done eating, the food reports in the toilet. If you want to eat at Mr. Big's Mark Bites, whatever they call it, by the time you are done consuming, the food reports in the restroom. It also enter here. So just like you need to eat to grow physically, you wear your clothes to look good physically. You rub your creams and do this your fine fine makeups that makes me not recognize you some of the times. You know, that's the same way you need to consciously, continually, steadily update your mind. Just like the engine of the car, you go and lose the engine once in a while, change oil. I do it my car every month or every two months. After I've run with my car, I'll go and open it. They will change the oil. They will put new oil filter. They will put new oil. They will put new hydraulic. They will change all of those things, you know. Then my car is sound. But the same way you do it to your car, if you don't do it to your mind, your life will knock engine. So your mind is an environment that needs to be continually updated. Updated with information. Updated with ideas, updated with books, updated with all kinds of information that will help you fast track your destiny. If you don't read, you will be written off in this world. If you don't study, you can't be outstanding. See what our world is turning into. Entertainment. What is all that? I have no problem with entertainment anyways because I'm one. I do entertainment also. But check most of our entertainers. Entertainment has replaced reading. Everything nice about, hey, hey, they jump. Everything is about now, what do you call them? Showbiz, fashion, modeling, catwalking. Are they bad? No, they are not. Everything is about fashion. Crazy kind of clothes, I don't know where they are coming from. Everything is about hairstyle. Go close to most of them. How many books have you read this month? Not one. Ignorance is the greatest battle confronting Africa. It's one of the greatest witchcrafts confronting Africa. Africans don't read. The blacks don't read. Get an education. Go beyond the university. Go beyond your formal school setting. Get an extra education on your life. Go for informal learning. Get a book. Buy a book. Read a book every day. Read a book every week. Read something about something. Use your phones creatively. Do you know there are PDFs you can get on your phone? You can just go on Google and Google in a particular whatever and just download it on your phone and you read. If you don't have money to buy books, some of these books are already online. Just type it in on Google. You will see a lot of alternatives free of charge. Ignorance is no longer the absence of information. It is now the deliberate refusal to go for it. Because information is everywhere. Don't say, I don't have money to buy a book. I don't have money to read. I don't have time to read. You are lying. Do you know I found out that there are some of these apps, or what do they call them? Some information now are on audio. There are books now that are translated into voices. You can download it on your phone, even while driving. Those of you who have cars and you drive, put audios, put messages, put information, place something on business, place something that can educate your mind. Stop most of the music, music, music thing. Every time your phone is played, it's music. Is it bad? No. Place something that deals with information. If you practice that way, you will not be obscure. This is the distinct This is what makes me distinguish from my equals. I read every day. I always is on my phone, my PDF, is on my iPad, is on my diary, is everywhere around me. Books are always around me. You can't see me and not see books. A man who does not read will not lead. And you know one of the problems of Africa, Nigeria in particular, has been the problem of leadership. Because we do not read. I don't have the time to dwell on that. Number eight. Okay, 
I think this is what I'm going to do. I'll run through number 8 and number 9 and 10. Then I'll leave the other one for next, you know, service. Maybe on Wednesday. So let's take number 8. Abuses from family and friends. It can also lead to, you know, a damaged soul. Abuses from family and friends. Abuses from family and friends. When a man or a lady lacks parental love, he, he, he lacks parental care, it can affect his mind. It can affect the way he thinks. There are people who have not been able to measure up in life because of the absence of some little, little, you know, family foundation. Some issues like love, issues like care. They didn't have them. So it ended up affecting their life, affecting their complex, affecting their self-esteem. It created rejection in them. Most of these young people you see who are battling with issues like rejection, battling with issues like low self-esteem, battling with issues like inferiority complex, battling with all kinds of issues of life, are simply people who did not receive all the adequate attention from their parents or from their family members. When a child is born, the first place the child learns love, the first place the child learns care is in the family. If a child lacks care, if a child lacks, lacks love from the mother and the father, that child will have a major defect in his behavior. You will see that child not being able to stand in the presence of other people. You see that child not being able to measure up where others are measuring. And some parents do it to their children without knowing it. When you beat your children's self esteem, maybe the way you talk, the things you tell them, oh Lodo, you are a bastard, you are an idiot, you are an angry, you can't go anywhere, you are you are nothing, you are inferior. Look at you. I even you if not because of God, who who even allowed you to come to this family? I've heard people talk to their children like that. You are a slow learner, you are a dullard, you are a fool, you are an idiot. You use all kinds of you will end up destroying that child's esteem. You never tell that child affirmative words like, oh, I believe in you. You are a great leader. You are going to make me proud. I see a precedent in you. The child does something. You don't call the child, hey, let's talk about this thing. What happened? Why did you do this this way? Why did you do this this way? That child will open up and tell you. But the slightest thing, you know, a lot of parents don't understand their children. And a lot of children don't understand their parents. There's a big gulf between, you know, parent-children relationship now. And that's why our society is turning out the way it's turning out. Every problem you see in society is a defect in the family. The family unit is daily disintegrating. The family unit is capsizing. Parents don't understand their children. They don't know their passion. They don't know their talents. They don't know their calling. You must read medicine, but the child wants to be a musician. You must study law because I'm going to become a man lawyer. But a child wants to study history. So because the child says history wants to study, you say, over my dead body, I will pay your visit. Well, maybe the child, because he wants to please you, because he thinks obey your prayers, the Lord, is the scripture that takes him to heaven. He finally goes and reads the law for you or read the message for you, but comes out wounded. No satisfaction. You must marry this Family. You must marry from this family. This guy is the one we prepared for you since the day. Before we were born, this was the guy we prepared. And the lady is in love with another man. This guy is a power power. You don't need to marry this guy. He doesn't have anything. What does he have to offer you? He's from one interior part of his sea. Let's marry from um, um, a uncle. The kid's like, no, mommy, this is the one I love. He said, but can't you see? He has a K-leg. The kid's in love with a K-leg. And he said, no, you must marry that senator's son. The guy marries the senator's son. After wedding, the beast in him comes out. He uses one. So it comes out. And you have accidental gap teeth.
So, abuses from family and friends. When families don't understand what their children are wired for, you end up creating defects in that child's life. When fa- parents don't understand what their children need, you raise children who will become miscreants in society, whether you like it or yes. When there's no proper home upbringing, you are going to have battles in society. You know, we talk about area boys. I say, all these area boys you see, who gave birth to them? It's an area father to bring an area boy to this world. True. Whether you like it or not, true. If you are an area father, you raise an area boy. If you are a responsible father, you raise a responsible son. You see them all over town, all over the nation, all over the places. And you are wondering, what is going wrong with our society? Is the way the family unit is. No relationship. No communication. There are fathers who think they are lions. Agobata. Who's coming to your house? Everybody runs in and go and hide in their bedroom. And you think you are the man. You are a beast. You are just suffering from inferiority complex. Because you can't give what you don't have. You see, the man is also carrying a wound he should be healed of. Because that wound you're carrying is also making you inflicting wound on that person. If you are healed and complete, you won't compete. You just come in. The moment they hear your car, vroom, you will even make the vroom sound loud so they would know the king of the jungle has arrived. And that child is dying of, of isolation. He sees his father. He can't go to him and talk to him. He's hiding from the father. They let him go and serve food and the next thing she wants is to go and hide. No communication, no relationship. You end up Letting that girl break loose. The world will break loose on her. All kinds of friends will enter her life. Because she's looking for somebody to talk to. That's when the wrong people enter. He's looking for somebody to express. That's when the wrong persons enter. The devil uses it to battle the mind. Once he gets into the soul of that child. And twists something there. That child carries a damaged self-esteem. Damaged thoughts pattern. Damaged, you know, low self-esteem walking around the places. She may be looking beautiful. She may have her makeups powerful. She may have all that in place, but still cannot. You see, some of them, they stand amongst their peers and their equals. They can't talk. Some of them stand around their peers and their mates. They cannot relate. Some of them, you bring them into the public. You see a beauty to behold, but she can't speak. I've seen huge guys, tall, hefty. Hey, they can't talk. Oh. Where others are standing, they can't stand. Oh. Just bring the guy now to this place where I'm standing and talking. You see his leg, children. <laughs> he is shaking. He is shivering. Why? Because there's wound inside. The father did never give him esteem. The father never gave him confidence. The job of your father was to do that when you were young. Your father's job was to build extinct. That's what lions do with their, their cubs. That's what eagles do with their eaglets. They train them on how to be lions. They train them on how to be eagles. It can be abuses from family. It can also be from friends. The same also goes for your friends. You know, another one can be divorce. It can create a long-lasting impact in the soul. You've lived with this lady for long and maybe somehow you are no longer together. Something happened, infidelity or whatever. And now it can have a negative impact on the soul. Another one could be, you know, rejection, inferiority complex. Okay, I've mentioned a few of them. and Let's look at number nine quickly. Sin consciousness can affect your soul. Sin consciousness. The feelings of unworthiness, guilt. And condemnation. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So all things have passed away. All things have become what? New. When a man is born again, God does not see him the way he used to be. God sees him the way he now is. But the devil has one way 
of keeping you where you used to be. He would use the consciousness of sin. He will use the guilt of sin. He will use the guilt of the past. He will use the guilt and the forces of the wrongs you have done. Hear this. Guilt and sin consciousness is more damaging than sin itself. It's worse than sin itself. So those feelings of unworthiness you have, each time you come before God's presence, we are singing, we are worshiping, you can't flow, you can't, um, it's only a sign that something has programmed your soul. God is seeing a righteous man. God is seeing a holy and sanctified man. God is seeing a, 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 a spotless lamb. But because the devil keeps reminding you of your past, of your sins, you keep seeing yourself as unworthy. I know there's some of you who are battling with that here. And anytime you are conscious about your wrongdoings, you keep doing wrong. Every time you are conscious about something wrong you've done, you fall into that wrong again. You keep doing wrong. The way to be free from wrong is to start thinking on the right. See yourself as a work in progress. See yourself as a righteous man. Your righteousness is not your own. It's Jesus' righteousness. It's a gift. You did nothing to merit it. Some people are trying to walk their way to living right. They are trying to struggle to do right. Just hook up to grace. Hook up to grace. Hook up to grace. Hook up to grace. Jesus, without you, I can do nothing. Hook up to grace. Keep seeing yourself the way God sees you. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? See yourself the right way. I'm a righteous man. I'm born again. I'm not a sinner. I am free from the law of sin and death. I'm a new creation. I'm in Christ. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are all past. Don't let the feeling of guilt cripple your destiny. Break out from guilt and break into freedom. And finally, because of time, addictive habits. Addictive habits. Addictive habits is one of the battles the devil wages, you know, against the soul. Addictive habits. The devil can take your soul captive, you know, through addic- addictions to alcohol, through addictions to lust, addictions to lying, addictions to stealing, addictions to drugs. Once something has become addictive, it's usually hard to stop it. And sometimes what it does is create a feeling of incap- incapability. It makes you feel incapacitated. There's a story of a guy called Albert Einstein. And uh, he was a very dull guy. He goes to school Others are learning, he can't learn. Others are contributing, he can't contribute. And his teacher told him, you are the dullest guy in the world. You are a slow learner. Can't amount to anything. And that thing became a thought pattern. Be careful the schools you send your children to. Be careful the teachers who teach your children. You have to check it. It can damage your child. If the teacher has a wrong mindset, if the teacher has a wrong thought pattern, he can destroy your child's destiny. It's not hard to do it. It's simple. Just allow that teacher to keep speaking wrongly to your child. Oh, Lodo. Every time, shame, 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 shame. Do I have witnesses here? It doesn't matter how much a school costs, or if it's a good school, 
Take your child there. If they have healthy teachers, take them there. Go and put them in a school where the madam or the auntie has a farm behind the school. There's one I used to have those days in school. Her name is Auntie Florence. As goes the names, goes the woman. Hey! Once you see her, she's a terror to behold. She has multiple canes. Before she flogs you, she asks you to choose one. And the confusion is which one to choose. Actually, to choose one. I'll call you names. Oloto. Fool. Slow learner. See how you failed. And the thing will just cripple you inside. Like, God, is this what my life is? Is this how I'm going to live this my life? I'm a failure. I'm a nobody. I failed. They did it to her about instant. One day, he came back to the house crying. The mother said, why are you crying, dear? So my teacher said, I am not meant to be in school. I should go and do mechanic. Nobody is done. You have not just discovered that guy's area of gifting. That's why you think he's done. Everybody is intelligent. Everybody has got brains. Everybody. Nobody is done. You have not just discovered that guy's area of competence. If you discover what that guy can do and channel him in that direction, you have a best brain there. That's why most of the things that our children are studying in school are not relevant. So they keep failing and failing and failing. You think the guy is not a good learner. No, you have not sat down to find out what is this guy's field of gifting. Where can he do better? If it's football, find a football academy and put him inside. I'm a good preacher. What do I have to do with medicine? If you put me in FMC, the death rate will increase. I assure you of that. Can I hear an amen? Mm, I assure you. I say, God has anointed me to be a doctor. Get me all your children. Get all your sick bodies. Lie down here. I will use kitchen knife. The way I will cut your intestines. God has called me to be a good speaker. I'm not a footballer. Can't you see that Mikael is intelligent in that area? There are mathematics in football that he, no matter how he tries to teach you, you won't understand. It's not your field. Once he starts teaching you using some terms, you know the guy is intelligent. You think football is for foolish people who don't have. If the guy is called to be a footballer, send him to a football academy. So the teacher of Albert didn't know the guy's calling. He concluded, you're a fool, worker. He went home. The mother sat him down and said, sit down, my dear. You are the finest brain in the world. You have the most, you know, you are the most brilliant guy. You can become anything you want to become. I see you as one of the greatest inventors, imagine. And she spoke words back into the child's life. Lo and behold, that guy became the greatest scientist that has ever lived. Be careful what you put into your minds, my friend. As I close with this. Be careful what you allow settle in your soul. In the next service, I'm going to be teaching you the outcomes of a battled soul. What are the things you see, literally, you know this person is undergoing battles in his soul. I'll show you the signs, I'll show you the symptoms. Then I will conclude it with how to remedy a damaged soul. How to remedy a battled soul. Either way, is there a solution for it. I'll show you what you must do 
to salvage your mind. This is one of the most interesting, you know, teachings I can ever teach you. That's why I have to take it easy. Because if you don't get it, the devil doesn't have new tricks, so it's the same old tricks. And the devil's power is not in his power necessarily. The devil's power is in his tricks. It's called devices. For we are not ignorant of the devices. Those devices are schemes. And those devices are within the soul. They are within the soul. They are within the mind. Ever since I learned this, I think I'm having some peace. There's no cause for killing yourself or bothering yourself. Do you know sometimes when you bother yourself about things or about people, the people you are bothering yourself about are not bothering about you. So why die? Why, why, why key your life? Move on, my friend. Be happy with your life and don't let nothing get into your mind and settle there. Anything that must get into your mind and settle should be thought of, you know, good, thought of excellence and all that. Don't look down on yourself. Somebody ran to me here yesterday. I was like, Pastor, I did a job for somebody. This person is supposed to pay me my money. And he's not paying me. Hey! Pastor, I came to tell you how to kill. I just came to seek permission from you. I want to go and break SARS. <laughs> I said, wow. I say, I understand this. I say, where is the person? He says, I've been Catholic here. <laughs> the first thing I thought about is, this rage is raging here. That guy in Catholic, is he also raging? Maybe he's taking Coke and Fanta mixed together. He has provoked you. You are here. You, the thing is on you. Who knows if the guy has just collected his girlfriend and they've entered the keke and they are going to shop right. Don't let people's action cause a reaction in you. Don't. Because they may not be reacting like you. You know what I said? See, anytime a pig wants to get you into his mess, refuse it. Because if you get into the mess of a pig, you will be stained. It will affect you, but it will affect the pig because that's his natural habitat. I don't think you heard what I said. I said, anytime a pig wants to get you into his mess, refuse to get him. Because if you get into the mess of that pig, you will be stained. You will feel trouble. You will feel abnormal. But the pig will feel normal because that is his habitat. It's natural for him to be dirty, to be anyhow, to be a rash, to be a heartbreaker, to do whatever he wants to do. It's natural. So you refuse it. That's not your habitat. That's his own habitat. You don't let people's actions now, you know, wire your reactions and all that. I had to sit down and tell myself this truth. Oh. Whether you like it or not, you will see things in life. That will wage war against your soul. I mean, two, four, seven. You will see them. They will come. But if you are wise, you will know how to put a defense against it. To guide your heart. Put a defense. Your focus should be on your destiny. Your focus should be on your future. That's my focus now. Your focus should be all the distractions coming your way is coming to take your eyes off your focus. It's coming to take your eyes off your dream. It's coming to take your eyes off the pictures and the blueprints God has shown you. When you worry your house over something that is not going right, does that thing know? When you worry over somebody who has hurt you, does that person know? So why not get off from that place you're worried and chart a course for your life and prove a point? Stand on your feet. I wish we get this thing because if you get freedom here, you are good to go. I'm sure by the time I finish on this series, some of you, maybe not all, but some of you, a handful of you, will definitely have freedom in this area. I don't 
hear what it is. Hear this. Let me tell you. You are the architect of your destiny. We're going to pray this morning. You are the architect of your future. You are the architect. You are the master planner of your life. Whatever is happening to you, you may not have control over. But you have control over the things that happens in you. If worry does not improve the set of your life, why have it? If depression does not improve the quality of your life, why own it? If malice does not improve the state of your being, why own it? Lift up your hands, lift up your voice, pray in one minute. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's Word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555. 747. Princeton Hills Ministries, raising global leaders.